Hey, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Mr. Kahn. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. It's a pleasure seeing everybody again here today on the Father's Set Apart Gathering. And uh, pray for you. We're going to have another uh, good class. We're going to try to hold the questions until after services. Uh, because we have a lot of material that we want to go over today. We want to make sure that everybody has a good understanding on uh, when does the day begin? Is it midnight? Is it morning? Is it evening? And today's topic is uh, the young, the day. If we just want to make sure that everybody has a, a well-rounded understanding, the way that we, the congregation of Yashirah, are going to be observing our days. And again, I, I love the questions. So let's please get some questions so I can um, try to get the answer to the best of my ability. If I don't have the answer, um, I get back with you throughout the week. If you give me a call or we tackle it next service. All right. So again, it's a pleasure seeing everybody here uh, again on the Father's uh, Gathering. I had a better week than the weeks before. All my weeks are better. I mean, they're good. Just the mere fact that the Father's woke me up, um, gave me another opportunity to get right what I didn't get right the day before and the days before. So I'm always thankful for the Father waking me up. Just give me another opportunity. Uh, the family as well. Um, I'm silly to keep a couple of shekels in the pocket, a roof over my head. And just seeing and uh, hearing from my brothers throughout the week, my sisters, sisters throughout the week, is, is such a pleasure. And uh, again, just giving all praise and honor to the Father for His grace, His mercy, for His uh, His esteem, His mercy. I'm just thankful forevermore, knowing that I can never truly pay the Father back all the great things that He had done for me. So I'm just in a in a mode or a mood all the time of just saying thank you. Staying thankful all the time. Uh, anybody have any testimonies they would like to share? Um, how the Father's been good to him throughout the week. Okay, we have the to yell. He, he, he's on point. He's going to share with us some of the, the mercy of the Father. All right. I just like to thank the Father for uh, keeping me out of jail this week. <laughs> You're not racing that highway again, though. Yeah, you? yeah no, I wasn't <laughs> racing this, but they were just saying, like, I guess because. When I got pulled over, it was by a state state trooper, and if it had been an Alpharetta cop, I probably would have just went straight to jail on the speed, because the speeds I was doing, so, oh. so yeah, so, <laughs> thankful <laughs> to the Father for that one, I was oh, like, yeah, we'll wow, take it. Wow, wow, yeah. A, definitely a, a blessing for sure, so. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to, um, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> So that they won't go off. Uh, yeah, you have to cover your car. Yeah, yeah. You have to cover the car. Those are real cars, so those are even worse. Wow, you have to put a governor up there. Uh, anybody else? Yes. I uh, just thank you all, you know, for a great. This week was a, was a great week for me personally, but it was a, a bad week for my family. You know, I didn't lose anyone. Thank you for the mercy of you all, you know, and uh, me and. Uh, Mr. Zabu and his family came together and we prayed. One of my sisters, you know, she's she been in the hospital for, I think, about two months. Wow. And um, just passing week, she, she almost died of a, a lung stone with blood. And, uh, but she, she came, they had her hooked up to tubes and everything, but she came through. She's now able to speak and stuff like that. And, wow. you know, it just, um, it was, um, you know, my family wanted me to come up to New Jersey, but um, I said, you know, I just started this new job, and you know, I don't know you might wake up. Cause, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, right. this is a this is a pivotal time for me and my you know my life where we are right now. So, but the you know, he opened her eyes, and you know, she's right. back to breathing. She's back to you know back to talking. Uh, this is going to college? No, this is this is um. One of my sisters from my mom's from kids. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, okay. So she's a, uh, you know, she's 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 still in the hospital. She's right. recovering, but she's doing way better than what she was. You know. Okay, great. And so great. I just, you know, my father, he's up there in Jersey now, but um, I'm just I'm just happy that you were just had mercy. You know, we didn't get a bad report. Hallelujah. So I just thank you for that. Great. Hallelujah. Very good. Very good. Yes. Yes. Just finished my sure. first. Oh yeah, just finished my first week in the new school. Um, okay. Kind of started off kind of rocky, but most I worked out. So I'm spoiled the end of the week. I think it's going to be pretty smooth and sailing. I think we're going to have a good year. Uh, the new start on my high school. Okay, all right. Yeah, great, excellent. Very good, very good. Anything else? Anything you need to with the ladies? The father has been working here with it. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So um, we're going to have our chief elder. Okay. Uh, is there anything else? No. All right. So we're going to have our chief um, elder, uh, Zakane, to vote the show for us seven times. And we'll have Shalak. If you can bring us in with prayer. pencil or pen, 
You had to have um, the Bible with you, the compact Bible dictionary with you. You had to have King James, I mean King James Version um, Bible with you. You needed to have the Book of Josephus and um, a couple other books that you had. You had to have. And so by the time a year came around, it was like second nature. I mean, you just knew how to uh, handle yourself. Anybody asked you any single question, any question. So basically, it took a year. So I'm also on the side of the congregation of Yashara, we have um, some ground rules. And the way that we did it, and it seems right, is that when you knew, what we have to do is that you're going to have to hold back a little bit, all right, until you get the feel of what's actually going on inside of the congregation. Uh, because it's a learning process. A lot of us are coming out of the churches, coming out of Islam, or whatever it is that you was involved with. And so this right here is totally different. The walk of a Hebrew Israelite of coming into Torah is different from anything else that you ever been involved with. It's just totally different. So again, um, maybe Shemai, do you have the um, the mission statement? And maybe you can just go over that uh, after services today, because uh, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page and what we're trying to do. And um, and just to let you know too is that about two years ago, I believe, was um, the mod and my dad came down mm -hmm. and positions were uh, appointed to certain brothers. Mm -hmm. And what we did is that um, we all agreed that we will follow these rules and regulations because this congregation is affiliated now with other congregations. Lamaz congregation, the dad's congregation, Hananiah out of California's uh, congregation, and Samak's uh, congregation. So um, these are the rules that we, we, we've discussed and it needs to be brought to everybody's attention. And we'll read the mission statement a little bit later. With the sound of the congregation of Yashiro, every man, first, every man, woman, and child, if you have a baby, we're expecting the baby too, all right? So every man, woman, and child is expected to interact in Torah services, in decency and in order. No more no elder, no officer, no captain, etc., can override any decision that a man makes in his house with his isha. However, he, the man, can be told that he is in the wrong, and secondly, he can be brought to counsel. These are just the rules inside the congregation of Yashiro. No more, no elder, no officer, no captain, or etc., is above counsel, because we have rules and regulations with this side of the house. In order for the house to function, there has to be rules and regulations. You can't go to work and do your own thing. You can't definitely uh, abide in Torah and do your own thing. Everybody is subject under a higher authority. And this is not the boast for um, nobody's being dogmatic, nobody is um, holding a, um, a staff, or nobody's going to get a meeting if they don't follow the instructions. It's just that we, let's just try to get a little home. So let's try to be in a pie. My disclaimer, this class here and none of the classes that I do, but, but particularly this one today, this is not a personal attack against any brother or sister, but each class is rather done to uplift, bring to clarity, some misunderstanding in scripture. Now in joking, in joking, all right, in joking, but however now I'm very serious, um, this was taught back when I was uh, on the streets, all right, and, um, and I see that it's still going on today. Um, let me just share this. No woman is going to roast in hell, all right, or be denied interest into the Malkut or the kingdom for speaking or reading in the congregation of Yashara or any other of our affiliates, meaning congregations. That's not going to happen because we'll show these things in scripture. Point one. We want to first go to uh, the book of Corinthians, the first, first Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse one. Watch how this works, because we're going to use scripture, and we're going to use some very important principles that we're going to have to uh, adhere to in order for us to uh, be on the, uh, the same page here. Yeah, this is first Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and we're going to read some sort of verse one. But, uh, but just for a minute, 
Everybody notices that um, in the book of Corinthians, there's the first, this, this chapter, this book one and book two. Mm -hmm. And if you start from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, and go into the second chapter, there's a lot of problems going on in the synagogue of Corinth. A whole lot of problems and issues. And we're going to address some of these issues here. Just a little bit. It said, uh, it is reported commonly. They mean this is an ongoing thing. It is reported commonly, now that it has in parentheses, that there is fornication among you, which is a congregation that was out in Corinth. You talked about these churches here that was in the uh, Asia Minor. And it's not so much as named even amongst the, um, the Gentiles. Now this is what was going on that one should have his father's Eshach. Now, when it says that one should have his father's Eshach, now remember, uh, this is not the, uh, the son marrying or having relations with his Ema or his mother, but this was now the, the son having intercourse with his father's concubines for the younger women that he now was involved with. Because if you look up the word um, wife now, it has this, the plural word, when you go back to the Hebrew, it's, it's nashim, which, which is plural. And usually what happens now, understanding culture, is that, and I know it, it gets kind of touchy, you know, but usually what happens because of children, and wanting to have and produce children, a lot of times the men would get a younger wife. Now this, not to discredit, and that caused problems because, oh, why you don't love me no more because I'm older, blah, blah, blah. But, but what happened now was that he would, uh, the man would usually get a younger woman to actually now be able to produce, but this caused a problem. So now you have a situation, I mean, this is all history. So, reading the books of Josephus, Philo, uh, we see this, this is gonna help us not to get an understanding of what's actually going on at the time. We just can't read the scriptures and just say, that's it. There's a history behind every single thing. So now, well, what happened now was that the man would get a younger wife, uh, somewhere near their age, and in some cases, near the age of the son. This is gonna cause a problem, because the son is not, wow, you know what, she's my age, and if he's not disciplined enough, they can be a problem. Things were so bad in Corinth where um, <coughs> fathers were um, promoting this type of behavior, you know, because he wasn't taking his second wife or the concubine serious, where uh, she's just a concubine or handmaid. That's not my wife, so he would go into her. We see a situation like this happening with, uh, with Reuben where Reuben actually defiled his father's couch where he actually went into his father's concubine. And there was, a, there was a severe punishment because of that. The punishment was so severe where Reuben could have died for that, uh, for that act. But what happened now was that he lost his firstborn uh, inheritance, and so that firstborn inheritance was removed from Reuben, and it went to Ephraim. So we're just going to talk about some very bad practices that was going on in this, in this synagogue. And what was happening now is that this type of behavior was going on, and then these people would now actually go to the synagogues on the Shabbat days and participate in the festivals and call themselves holier or set apart than thou, as if there's nothing wrong with it. And so we have a letter being sent to Paul, and Paul is now addressing um, this problem here, and I read it again. It is reported commonly now, because this is an ongoing thing, that there is fornication among you, and such fornication that is not so much as mentioned amongst the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife, and you are puffed up, and have not mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. And um, we're just reading um, a response letter here. But well, those are some very serious charges when Shaul is talking about here now might be taken away from among you. 
But verily, as absent in the body, the Shaul is not there, but present in the Ruach of the Spirit, have judged, um, have judged the matter already, as though I were present concerning him that has so done this deed. In the name, and again, in the name of our sovereign, Yahushua HaMashiach, when you are gathered together in my set apart spirit, and it's not Shaul's set apart spirit, because uh, let me just clear the air with this too. I don't care what Paul says. Don't give a rats behind what Paul says. As long as I can identify it and connect it with scripture, it's fine. And the reason why I'm saying it like this is because uh, there's a lot of people who are, they are taking certain things out of context. It's almost if they're challenging the Father's words with Shaul's words. But I am here to say that Shaul spoke in the center of our spirit, and I have no problems with Shaul. Shaul made it very clear. When he's speaking, he said, I said this and not the Father. So he's giving counsel. So we must make sure that we understand or understand the letters. Then it goes on to say, um, in the name of our sovereign, Yahushua HaMashiach, when you are gathered together in my set of our spirit, or a ruach, with the power of our sovereign, Yahushua HaMashiach, to deliver such a person who has committed such an act, a one to Hashatan, for the destruction of the flesh, that the ruach, or the spirit, might be saved in the day of the sovereign, um, our sovereign, Yahushua HaMashiach. Now, your esteeming is not good. We don't say glory. Okay, we get into that. Because the way that we want to do it here in the congregation of Yahshua all, we believe that if you kept it Hebraic, you kept the whole thing uh, Hebraic, you're going to come out with a totally different um, understanding of Scripture versus um, reading it now in this Quaker English. Let me just say this too now with that. This is written in Quaker old style English. If we were trying to communicate with our forefathers 4,000 years ago, they would not be able to understand a word that we're saying. They wouldn't be able to do it because when you look at the Hebrew alphabets, remember now those are consonants, but we do have five vowels. But everything was written in consonants and there were no vowels. So the way that we have prepositional phrases, adverbs, and adjectives, and things like that to our sentences, they wasn't necessarily doing it that way. So make sure that when you're reading the scriptures now, that you're looking at it from the Hebraic perspective, you have the strong concordance with you, you have a lexicon with you to try to give you a better understanding of the scripture. And when you read it, make sure that you're reading um, a couple of different versions to try to make sure that you have the best understanding possible with it. That's going to be the key in understanding the scripture. And again, remember, we're reading um, old Quaker English, and we have so many different versions out here that we have to make sure that we're coming up or reading the scriptures correctly, or to the best of our ability. Now, your esteem is not good. Know you not that a little leaven that's going to be very important. A, just a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. So now, pe these people that are persons that were doing this thing, Shaul says, purge therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened, for even Yahushua HaMashiach is our Passover who was sacrificed um, for us. So let's make sure that we have a good, good understanding, or understanding of what's going on here. Now, even back in the day, back in the day, um, as I can um, attest to this, when we was out there on the streets, um, there was a, a very big misunderstanding. Uh, First Corinthians, the 14th chapter, as we read, um, 27 to 35. As I came about maybe four years ago, it was him, um, Shemai, and I believe it was um, Leah. When you all got together and you broke down the scripture here and you did um, a marvelous job on it. And we're going to try and see if we can bring some clarity to what's going on here. And again, remember, the stage is set this way. There's a lot of problems that's going on in Corinth. And also remember this too, because I came and I, we talked about this. This is a letter to Corinth. It's not a letter to the Ephesians, to the Philippians. This letter is geared towards only the Corinthians. But you can apply this now to other congregations. Saying it like this, Shalak, if you wrote a letter to your Isha 
Baby, I miss you. I love you. When I come home at the end of the day, we're going out to dinner. We're going to dance. We're going to have a nice time. All right? That letter is addressed to your Isha. Another woman comes into the house. All right? She's a guest. She can't now read your letter that you wrote to your Isha, and she's now under the understanding once you get home, you're going to now take her out to dinner, her out to dancing and all this other stuff. So I just want us to understand that these are letters written to specific or particular churches. It's not, this was a problem that was going on in the, amongst the Corinthians. All right, so uh, watch how this goes. First Corinthians 14, 27. If any man speak, and again, you have to read the whole um, chapter. And we, and we're not going to do that because that's not today's topic. Today's lesson is going to be on the young of the day. Now, if any man speak in an unknown, and the word unknown is in italics, so whenever you see anything in italics, that means that it's not originally there. This is what the, um, the writer actually, or the translator actually put in to try to make the sentence um, sound um, understandable or, or, or readable. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. Meaning now is that in a Christian church, that's not the language. <laughs> Whatever they be doing in, ch in the churches, backflips, women dresses falling all up in the air, and then the usher has to come and cover the woman because I see it. Okay, because there's...